there are no issues when pronouncing the Flex on Podcast name because it rolls off the tongue easily. Much like Mr. Bonchero's finger roll through the lane. God's favorite host back in with another NBA draft profile. You know, it wouldn't be right if I didn't have the draft guru himself for the Flex Zone. Voice of Reason. The right hand man. Senior producer. Captain of the Goofy Ship. Commander Lorian. Commander Devonta himself. Wearing all black, baby. Put the competition to bed. Yo, yo, yo. What it do, man? What it do, man? We. We get it in with these with these uh, draft profiles, man. Hey, man, wouldn't rather do it with anybody else, my brother. And we're taking a look at the top prospects of the draft, and we got to round it out with a guy who I really like. Actually, think has probably a higher upside as anybody, Mr. Paolo Bonchero from Duke University. This kid, I think, has potential, Cravante. Let me tell you a little bit about him. But if you're watching this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up, hit that bell, comment down below, let me know what you think about Mr. Bonchero and where does he go and where do you see him being in the NBA, any comparisons as well. Guess what, Cravante? He's 6'10". <laughs> 6'10". <laughs> there it is. Here we go again. 6'10", wingspan, 250. Pretty much can do it all inside, outside. Came in from Duke since day one. He was a guy with Holmgren who was discussed as being the number one pick potentially. And you've seen it. Pretty much was able to bully most competition and just use his overall skill and potential to outwit and win one-on-one matchups. I think he's good in isolation. And if he goes where I think he will, I think he'll go fit well with another young team picking in the top three. But Cravante, when you look at Mr. Bonchero out of Duke University, what do you see here? And he is just 19 years old. Birthday, not so November. Man, I tell you, man, these guys, it, this is, like I said, with all the other draft profiles, man. 6'10", can shoot, can handle, like, this is the way things are going. Um, He may, he's, pro, he's arguably the most polished offensive player in the draft. Um, Capable of scoring all over the floor. Um, and he's able to make plays for his teammates and create mix, miss, miss matches with his uh, size. Like he was saying, he's 250 pounds, and he moves pretty well. Like, if you see him run to home grin, what you think will happen? Oh, he's going he gonna to put that, that shoulder. He's going to put that little shoulder in him. Put that shoulder. You know how they do I, it. I'm, 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 I'm just saying, man. So he's not he's not no little guy. And – um. <laughs> He gives he gives pretty good effort on the defensive side of the ball too. Um, he can play a lot of he he can play against a lot of fours and like slower guys who's on who still plays the wing. Um, he if if I have to nitpick offensively, he's really really he's damn good. He's really really good. Um, jump shooting not as consistent as you would like it to be, um, but. He gets his teammates involved. He can be a bully at times, which you like to see. That's that that that's the toughness, toughness of aspect to his game. And um he did a good job leading Duke as far as they can, as far as uh, as far as he can take him. Um, you know, until they ran into they their uh their rivals from down the road. Um, so yeah, man, if I if I have to absolutely nitpick, um, it's his jump shooting. Um, but offensively, he's it. He 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 he's the guy, but I, I would say he's probably one notch below uh, Jabari. Speaking of Bonchero, it looks like he will be the Rockets' pick if he's there at three. They're going to run to the podium as they should to take him. He played for Coach K. Cravante, so you know he can take coaching. Houston's head coach Stephen Silas, the son of the great Paul Silas, by the way, another brother, head coach in the NBA. So you got to like what you see there. And the Rockets roster real quick. Jalen Green, Christian Wood, Kevin Porter Jr., John Wall I don't think will be there, obviously. Dennis Schroeder probably won't be there either. Kenyon Martin Jr., Eric Gordon could be traded. So a lot of opportunity for Mr. Boncaro to come in and play from day one. And real quick on Jalen Green, probably one of my favorite young players in the league. He's a walking bucket. Word. Word, 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 and now, uh, you adding you adding um Montero to the mix, he can continue to be a bucket, 
but then Montero adds a little toughness, a little, you know, everywhere else. He can he can move, he can score um as well too. Um, but he I I can foresee him getting a lot of people in um in foul trouble. But once he works, my, my only thing is if he if he works on his mid-range game, he is going to be a problem. Like his stock is will be just as high as Jabari Smith if he if he can work on that uh, work on that uh, that mid range section, which has become like a lost art in the uh, in the NBA with all the you know the three point shooting going on. Thanks, Steph Curry. As you mentioned, he's a beast in the post, probably the best, possibly the best post game in the draft, and he Pro- yeah. And, but then and that's also a loss a lost art. You know what I'm saying? So you know he like I said. From the post, he has pretty good vision um, with uh, getting his other teammates involved. But he could also score. So, you know, and him being 6'10", 250, he can throw it around. Now, when you watch him play Gravante, he definitely plays with that intensity, as we talked about with Jabari. He can bring his lunch pail, dig in. Any comparison or mix of players? I know Jabari was kind of a mixture. I know Chet Holmgren kind of reminds you of Porzingis. Mm-hmm. What do you think about? Bonchero. I'm intrigued to hear what you think about his comparison. Um reminds me of Chris Webber. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go 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 a little little further back. Um just one competitive. Um IQ is really high. He he only played for Coach K at Duke. Um so IQ is really high, toughness is high, and we 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 all saw Chris Webber. He could be a bully. But right. he can he can still put the ball he can still put the ball in the hoop. Not the best um, outside of the the painted area um, as far as jump shooting, but he can get to his spots and he can look dominant on the offensive side of the ball. But outside of just dominant, he also looks pretty polished as well. Like he know what he's doing out there. Right. So yeah, I like I like Chris Webb. But I was thinking about uh, a little bit of a. Uh, a little bit of like David West, a little bit too. David West back was a his, uh, very any, underrated player. Back in any days. Now you know if they get Bonchero in Houston, which looks like it could happen, it could remind me. Now I'm not saying they're as good yet or better. It could remind me of what you got in Boston with Tatum and Brown. And when I say that, it's because you got two top twenty. Top 25 players, all-star caliber guys. One's probably a superstar now on the cusp. One's on that way, can play like a superstar on any given night. Yeah. They don't back down from anybody. You have these two guys. You have a chance to win. You put Jalen Green with another year of seasoning. Bonchero coming into the league. They could have their two cornerstones to build their team around for the future. Listen, man, I think I probably – well, I was about to say – the, the way the draft unfolded with the lottery, we probably couldn't have had three three better teams picking the top three. But then I thought about the Sacramento Kings. So, you know, that that Mark, that's, Mark where you at? Mark calling you out. That's 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 so that's that that's somewhere in there. But these are teams that really, really can all use a little a little bit more talent. And Houston's fall from grace <laughs> has been tough to watch. Um we're talking about like these guys were contending maybe two to three short years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, three, four, four years ago, ish ago. And just just the it seemed like the, the bottom has fallen from uh from underneath them. Um I'm hearing some stuff. I, I'm not sure what they're gonna do with John Wall. Is he just gonna pick up his option and he's gonna stay? And but more importantly, is he gonna play? Because right. if John Wall comes back, I think that elevates Everybody, I think that elevates Green and that and that uh, elevates his good brother right here as well. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. And Eric Gordon is a hell of a basketball player. I don't know if he's going to be with Houston now. If they trade him and get draft assets back or get some type of future considerations, if Eric Gordon does play, that could help them as well. But if they get something for Eric Gordon, they get another piece as well. Just saying. Oh no, for sure, for sure. But you know this brother right here has a absolute like you were saying before, um, he has the potential to be to be it um, to be an all star. And listen, you lie. You for those that play basketball and who is not a point guard, 
having a point guard makes your life significantly easier. Yep, I agree. And he gets easy buckets. Jalen Green's primarily a jump shooter. We know how the Warriors have made that look easy. They're the only team to ever be able to do that. You need guys who can get easy buckets. Bonchero does it as well as anybody in this draft. And him and I think Jalen Green reminds me of a young Tatum and, and Jalen Brown. So I think they can have that potential to be all-star caliber players in the next couple of years. It's the West. It's tough. It won't come overnight. But Houston, like we said with Orlando, like we said with the Thunder, you got nothing but time. Pack your patience. Plus, there's a lot that you do in Houston anyway. He ain't worried about the Rockets right now. <laughs> he's in Texas Heat, so he gonna keep a he gonna keep a nice amount of his, of his money. So yeah, yeah, he, he gonna he gonna be all right. Well, Cavante, draft profiles in the books again, my brother. Hey man, we should do this more often, and we will. Yes, we shall. We may have to may have to take a dive and do some MLB. They got a draft coming up soon too. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, yes. But I do know the Orioles have the first pick. And uh, Cravante, the Wizards have the 10th pick. We'll be live tomorrow or today, whenever this video comes out, for the draft to get your live reaction, as we did with the Washington Commanders, to see how goofy they will be with the 10th pick. But I appreciate you, my brother. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 man. Ain't nothing going to piss me off worse than that Commander shit, yo. <laughs> Ain't nothing gonna piss me off because honestly, in the NBA draft, I don't know. It's a crapshoot because typically, out of the top three, I don't really know these guys like that. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? So I'm gonna look at it like probably like eh, I don't know, <laughs> but that commander, that, that 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 was terrible. Y'all had a layup, a slam dunk. I told you layup, how Hamilton was gonna be, and they and they broke it. But, and, and, and again, I'm hearing some good things out of camp from uh, Jaha Dotson. So, you know, it's nothing against him. It's just that there were better players available. Let us know in the comments what you think about Mr. Bonchero, the Rockets, Houston Rockets fans, NBA fans, Flex Zone family. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that bell. Hit that subscribe button. We're growing. We appreciate it. We need you, you, and you. And Cravante, until next time, or tomorrow, or today, for the NBA draft. See you later, my brother. All right, man. Catch you in a few. Appreciate it. Peace.